time to take off the gloves and to stop being so soft. And uh, there are very, very important things that uh, need to be said. I don't know why people are so afraid to say the truth. The truth must be said. And it's our obligation as children of the master of the universe uh, to be loyal children to our father. It's his kingship. It's the kingship of your father. And if you have people here that are stealing from your father, it's not right. And if you see it, so you must tell. And if uh, there are people that are beating up your brothers, and you're not going and protecting them, and helping them, and saving them, so something is wrong with you, very wrong with you. Like, how can you let those things happen? So. Many times I want to say that I'm crazy and this is why I'm not like that, but the truth is that I'm finding myself pretty normal and not so crazy. I'm just calling you to join me and to go out from your craziness because you're crazy. Because your brothers and sisters are suffering and I don't know if you really can say that you don't feel that, that you cannot see that. Or maybe you are freezed, paralyzed, cannot move to feel that you're too weak. I can't see how can it be that you will be weaker than me. Like, who do you think I am? I'm a person that grew up with no support from his family, to no Jewish background. I decided to do tshuva all by myself. When I said to my father, I want to do tshuva, I want to keep Shabbat, he said, stop making fun of yourself. When I said to my mother, I want to keep Shabbat, she said, I'd rather you will be gay than being Jew, religious. For hours on hours, from, from months on months, my family fight with me and try to reject me and my father told me that he will kill himself if I will continue with my craziness of the tshuva and religion and with no background, no knowledge of no Jewish concepts, nothing. I didn't know anything about Judaism. I came from nowhere into this, into this game. And then you go and you are so strong and motivated and you want to learn and you want to grow and you want to succeed and you want to, to develop and to achieve big things and you see and you learn in Kolel for years, Gemara and Shulchan Aruch and Mishnayot and then slowly slowly Hashem is helping and your eyes are being opened and you realize that you're surrounded with liars. In a Frum community, in a religious in a religion area, where everyone Hasidic, Hasidic and don't take a shower, I can't understand that. What's all the Hasidut? What's Hasidut? You're not even clean, you smell bad, what, 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 which Hasid you are? If you don't take a shower in the morning, if you don't brush your teeth, what's your connection to Judaism? Where is it starts? Welcome. Thanks. Welcome. I'm not tall as you, but... <laughs> 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 Welcome. <clears throat> if you see, you find yourself surrounded with people that are not loyal to the truth. And everyone tries to fake his, his game, his act in a different way and everyone are like, me, I wake up at 4 a.m. and the other one is like, me, I'm giving my maiser to the Beit Midrash. Everyone found something that feels comfortable for him and that's it and he's just 
Leave me alone. Don't, don't, don't bother me anymore. But it's not the end of the game. It's not the end of the story. It's not the only thing that Hashem wants from you. That you will, oh, you're learning Torah every day, four hours Torah, and that's it. And now you can treat your wife like a slave. Like, what, what? Who gave you that permission? You're going to abuse your children because you're, uh, you call yourself a Talmid Chacham? If you're not a Talmid Chacham, what it means to be a Talmid Chacham? A real wise scholar, Talmid Chacham, learns Torah. You're talking about a holy person that don't have the ability to insult no one, can hurt a fly. He doesn't have that inside of him. He's clean from, from anger, from, from judgment. He loves everyone. He cares about everyone. If you're not like that, you're not a Talmid Chacham, even if you're going with a $5,000 suit and your wife with $10,000 wig. It doesn't mean anything in the eyes of Hashem. Hashem bought her the wig and Hashem bought you that jacket and that's it. And it's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's empty. It's empty. What do you think that it contains? Nothing. Your avonot, your crimes, it's hiding your sins. It, it's, hi, it's hiding your, 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 your crimes. You look like an angel and inside you're a demon. You're a shed yudi. A Jewish demon. Like Kaspel, the friendly ghost. Okay, so feel good with yourself. It doesn't make you a better person to wear that jacket, to have a long beard, to have peo, to... Oh, I'm keeping Shabbat. Killing Shabbat and killing everyone. Keeping Shabbat and killing your family. Killing your parents, killing your friends, killing your neighbors. Everyone are evil. Rebuking everyone. Talking Lashon around everyone you ever met in your life. Speaking about everyone. You're destroying Bet HaMikdash. Who are you? You're the snake. You're Talmid Chacham. You're, you're, you're confusing. Also the snake thought that he's a Talmid Chacham. He was a genius. He remembered all the rules and all the halachot. A demon. The angel of death with a black jacket, with a knife of a ritual slaughterer. Go and take everyone down. It's not Judaism. Judaism is a connection to the Creator. It's the love to the creations. It's the appreciation. It's the gratitude. It's the love. It's the support. It's the kindness. It's 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 midot. It's avodat midot. You cannot have Torah before you have derech eretz, the way of the land, the way people behave, to have perfect manners. I was learning in yeshiva, and I'm a rude person. I am. I'm telling you, I'm chutzpan from first level, 100% chutzpan. I was learning in the yeshiva of a very righteous man, the rabbi over there, he was very righteous. People would admire him, praising him all of the time. I told them, the things that you're praising him for are not things to praise him. If you really think that he's righteous, that he's tzaddik, you need to understand that you don't have no understanding about who that he is. But all of his kindness and all of his mercy and all of his love and all of the fact that he's polite and generous, all of those things, that's not going to be called righteous. You're not going to call him righteous on that. That's just a regular person that keeps Shulchan Aruch. Everyone is obligated to be as nice. Perfect midot. It's not righteous. Righteous is something beyond. A perfect person is a perf person that keeps Shulchan Aruch. You want to be righteous? It's beyond Shulchan Aruch. You want to be Hasid? It's beyond Shulchan Aruch. To be perfect, to keep all Torah and mitzvot, it's a simple Jew. That's a Jewish person. He's keeping Torah and mitzvot. Great, it's not righteous. Righteous is something else. You want also to be righteous? Great. Your wife, she will tell us if you are righteous. Your neighbors won't never, will never know. Your friends will never know. Only you will know and your wife will testify on you who you really were. 
You can pretend to be rabbi, to be rich, to be wealthy, to be generous, or you can write a $180,000 check and you're cheap as, as hell, you're the, the cheapest person in the world. And you gave your liver now that people will think that you are a, a mensch. Okay, so you're also sick in your mind. It doesn't make you generous. Really, to come closer to Hashem in Barach, it's to be truthful. Think about it. In the end of days, soft davar, in the end of everything, hakol nishma, everything will be heard. The truth, the light of Hashem will expose everything. There will be nothing hidden anymore. Why to come to that crazy moment with hidden things? with secrets, with lies, that you haven't dealt with them. How can you do that to yourself? Be selfish, think about yourself. How can you put yourself in that position that all of your family, all of your friends, your ancestors, your neighbors, all of the righteous people, everyone will stand over there and will see you naked as you really are. Who that you really are will be exposed 100%. All your thoughts, all your feelings, all your hopes, all your desires, all your actions, all your words, everything. So why to wait to that crazy moment and to, and, and to be ashamed? Because you want to be honored in this world? Okay. I call it stupid. In my vocabulary, it means stupid. I'd rather to do tshuva today. I'd rather to come to Hashem Itbarach today and to tell Him, listen Hashem, I'm, I don't know, I'm so confused, I'm so crazy, I, I want to eat everything, I want to, 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 to steal from everyone, I want to break everyone, to, I'm crazy, I'm a sugar. I'm completely mad, Hashem. I'm sick in my mind. I'd rather to do that today before, one minute before. That's why the Mishnah is telling us that it's better for the person to do tshuva on his deathbed one second before he will die. And you can never know when you will finish. So that's why you need to do tshuva now. To go to Hashem and to say, I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? No, it's not. It's not. You must say sorry. Sorry Hashem on all the Justin Bieber songs I heard in my life. <laughs> sorry Hashem. 80% of the public are laughing. You don't embarrass. You don't, you don't, they're the shame of you. Say to Hashem, Hashem, what can I do? It's an amazing song. I love that song. Say, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you too religious to do tshuva? Welcome. Are you too religious to do tshuva? Hashem is not religious enough for you? <clears throat> you want to come closer to Hashem? The only way to do it is to break the arrogant to pieces. Your pride to pieces. To crush all of the imagination that you hold on yourself. Oh, I'm this and I'm that and I'm going to be and I'm going to become to be. Nonsense! Hashem can take you in one minute and say thank you that He didn't yet. And be humble and go be nice. Spend your life to be nice to people, to care about people, to love people, to support people. A woman reached out to me through WhatsApp. She's sending messages. She's saying, I had spiritual experiences. I saw lights and colors and souls and beings. And I met people and they said this and that. And what do you say? And when I thought and when I realized and I came to this understanding, and, great, I hear you. And then she's asking me, okay, what do you think about that? Like... 5,000 words of, of messages. I told her, if you really look for happiness, I suggest for you to go learn a profession in life. Find a nice husband, build a house, have a family, and 
it will be okay. Drop your nonsense. Maybe you experience those things, but like, who cares? It's not important. You're great. You're amazing. You did the best. Everything was perfect. Drop it. It's not for you. If you're asking me if it's right or wrong, so you're wrong, you're in the wrong direction, go open a store, learn how to, 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 to do things, open a, a, a kindergarten, do something, be happy with yourself, go paint, be an amazing photographer, do something with your life, be happy, be good. People looking for things in heaven, oh, now I need to do tshuva. And I'm talking to you with uncovering the scars of, of my crazy process of tshuva. Being too radical, no, I must be chassid. Three times a year in Uman, and four times in his birthday. I cannot miss his birthday, like he's giving cupcakes over there. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> you want to go to Abenu? Great, go to Uman, but be normal. You want to go to Rabenu? Great, go to Uman, go to Rabenu. Perfect, no problem. Just relax. You don't need to take medicines with you to Rabenu. If you're losing your mind on the way to Rabenu and worse on your way back, don't go. Relax. If you lose your mind keeping Shabbat, relax. Don't keep it. Wait. Let's talk about it. I'll teach you how to keep Shabbat. Relax. There are things that you need to build before. He needs to keep Shabbat from two hours before Shabbat and to take it out after Rabbeinu Tam. And he must eat bread in all of the Seudot. Crazy. I don't know which animal can eat so much. Relax. We'll talk about it. Relax. And he must go to Shurim and classes and Shalosh Shudet, whatever. All the imagination in one pack, and who needs to carry that? Your wife, or your slave, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? She doesn't even want to do tshuva. She doesn't care about all of this craziness. Leave her alone. No. She's refusing. Isha Sarvanit. I'm going to take you to the Rav. I'll take you. I'll show you. Opening books. <laughs> Berlin, oh, two years ago, we didn't know how to read. Now you're opening books to your wife. She taught you about Hashem. She's closer to Hashem than you, and you're now going to teach her halacha. I never saw a person so crazy, like me. But that's my tshuva. I've been punished from heaven. I need to do tshuva in public, in front of thousands of people every day. I need to do tshuva in public. That's my tshuva. Not everyone been punished on doing tshuva in public. There are people that need to do tshuva alone. With themselves, with Hashem, they can go to the forest. Me, that's my one hour. But I do it every day, thank God. I have one hour of confession in front of public. I, my, probably in different life, maybe also in this life. I stole from, stolen from you. I hurt you. I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? I'm sorry. I apologize. I love you. I miss you. I care about you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I love you. I'm apologizing. I hope I apologize will be accepted. Here in heaven, that Hashem will accept my tshuva. You need to do tshuva yourselves also. On all of the craziness, being so radical, halachot and rules, and must wash your hands, and before the fruits, and after the fruits, and before Birkat Amazon. Okay, I hear you. I know those books. I read those halachot. We're not saying don't keep them. But keep them, but don't kill your wife, don't kill your children. It doesn't written that you're allowed to insult and break the spirit of your family, of your friends, to disrespect your parents, because now you imagine to yourself that you are I don't know what. If really the Torah would affect you in a positive way, you would understand that you're zero. Because the Torah makes the person humble, humiliates him. Give him the vessels to respect everyone, to love everyone, to see the good in every soul, to care about everyone, to run and to, 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 to be nice and generous and to, to love, to have the inspiring flame of love to Hashem and to people and to the Torah. Not a crazy 
bad negative spirit or makes you crazy or want to kill everyone have to punish everyone hate everyone what are they doing how the, why they're not keeping Shabbat also in Pinchas on Pinchas ben Elazar that he took the spear it's written on him that he took it means it's not a person that walks all day long he forced himself to take the spear he's not going with the spear looking for enemies all day no you're talking on the son of Aaron, that he is Ohev Shalom, that he cares about the peace, that he loves the creations, that he influences peace between people. He loves everyone, he respects everyone. And then, Ruach Hashem, Ruach Kinat Hashem, Lav Shauto, the spirit of Hashem push him to action one time in his life. If we would talk about a crazy person that go with the spear, the Torah wouldn't respect him on that. He wouldn't become to be Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi, that's the person that became to be the man of peace. That Hashem gives him the covenant of peace. Peace on that act of killing a person, of killing a woman. Because it was so against his nature and Hashem really wanted him to do that thing and he did against his nature. That is the only reason why he was rewarded on that. Like Avraham Avinu, now being sent to go and kill his child, Yitzchak, to slaughter his child. And now he's being rewarded on that. I would call him a murderer. Well, you're going to kill your son? Crazy. It was crazy also for him. And because that he was a man of kindness and so far from violence and so far from killing his son in any aspect, and he broke himself to pieces because Hashem told him to do that, that is the reason why he was rewarded. Not because he did it. Every murderer can do it. Because it was so against his will and he forced himself to do it. We need to be people of peace. We need to love the creation, and to bring them closer to the Torah, not to reject them by the Torah. No, he cannot learn in this shul. She cannot live in this street, in this neighborhood. He cannot come into that Beit Midrash. No, him, we don't want him in this synagogue. She, he needs to, to, to divorce her, to send her. Hey, what's that? That's Judaism? It sounds like ISIS, like Daesh. It doesn't sound like Judaism at all. I promise you. That's not the right way. That's not the will of Hashem. Violence, cruelty, criticism, hatred, Lashonara. What's that? Is that your soul? If that's your soul, you're the devil. So, welcome. Welcome. We welcome you to class. Welcome. We have the devil with us in class. We're not afraid of the devil. We can deal with the devil. Are you in a mission of serving the Creator? Great. Ask him, what do you want from me? What's my mission? I have a crazy love for jazz music. Okay. And I don't know how, how it fits to Judaism, but 20 years, 30 years of hearing jazz music and being in concerts and shows, I don't know, I love it. I have to hear it. So, Hashem, what do you want me to do with that crazy love? What do you want me to do with those vibes, with that flow, with that music, with that energy that I love it so much? Hashem, please answer me. Hashem will answer you. Hashem will guide you to the purpose of your life and you will see that with that hobby, with that love, with that passion to music, you will redeem people from hell. You will find a way how to use the things that God gave you to serve Him with. One person that He's able, one time when we were in, 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 in the Kineret, in the Galilee Sea, with the family, my, one of my children was drowning. It was the Ilula of Yosef HaTzadik. In the day of the Yorzat of Yosef HaTzadik, we were in the sea, in the Galilee Sea, and one of my children started drowning. What did I do? 
immediately I have that gift from heaven that my father forced me to learn how to swim and I was a professional swimmer and I got that gift from heaven immediately I swam and I found him and I took him out of the water and I saved my child's life great you have a talent you need to use it some other person he's got the ability to be a DJ Hashem took him to learn how to make trance and house and, and, and rave music. Great. That's what Hashem did with you. Can you argue with that? You cannot. Hashem did it to you. Why? Ask him. When you're going to ask him, you will be answered. You're going to find the answer. And what will happen then? Suddenly they're going to tell you that there is a yeshiva in Lakewood that 80% of the children over there are falling off the derech and you need to go and they need to hear some trance music and suddenly you're going to use your talents over there. Trance? Me? No. I'm learning Torah. Five years already in yeshiva. I'm not listening to trance music. Okay, yeah, but Hashem is a little bit wiser than you and He knows exactly why He sent you to those wild forest parties 5, 10, 20 years ago and there was a purpose for that. So get out of your fake dream of being religious and wearing a very fancy suit and start work and save souls of people that without your connection to them, they will die, they will drown. Why? Because they must hear trance today. And if you're not going to play to them, so they're going to hear Sayochi. I don't know who they're going to hear. They're going to hear some, not, I'm not... Uh, Someone. That's what I remember from 20 years ago. He's dead already? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Okay, we're gonna play like we don't know. But with your talent, you can save lives of people. You can grab a guitar and play in a kumzitz. You're gonna save people, those people's life. You know how to act. You can make shows. You can make art into the Jewish community. You can bring shows and, and music and, and life and happiness to little children, to women, to men, to open their eyes from that crazy gray narrow path that they're walking. No, yes, no, not allow. I need to call my rabbi. Wait, Hashem gave you some brain. Before you call your rabbi, Hashem gave you brain. Use your brain. Hashem gave you a heart. No, I cannot count on myself. No, no, a person cannot count on himself until he is dead. Listen, there are ways to interpret every verse. There are things you cannot count on yourself. Great, but also you must count on yourself on different things. You have verses that are forcing you, situations in reality that are forcing you to count on yourself. If you're not going to count on yourself, who are you going to count on? If your wife, she cannot count on you because you're counting on the rabbi so she can go and marry the rabbi. She don't need you. That's reality. If every time your wife needs you, you need to call the rabbi. So what are you doing? You're not part of the... the there is no triangle here. Your wife, she's actually receiving from the rabbi. If you, after going and learning years in yeshiva, everything, you must ask a rab, no, kechol asher yerucha, you are twisting the rules of the Torah, you're violating the Torah, you're making nonsense, laugh, joke, or, or yourself. If you're not able to say psak, no, I don't remember. Okay, so take responsibility on yourself and say to Hashem in Barach, open my mind until I remember. And still you must keep on giving a wonderful feeling in the house like everything is good. Even if you don't know the halacha. You want your wife now to feel that, oh, she destroyed Shabbat because you don't know the halacha. You don't know the halacha and she will go and feel guilty. It's a crazy world. It's a sick world. It's not supposed to be like that. You're going to make her feel guilty because you don't control yourself and you don't know the halacha and you cannot control your horses, so she is the one to blame. And to be punished, of course. Or else she is a shara, evil woman, refusing. I'm talking too much. I'll do tshuva on that as well. Tomorrow I have a class in Monsi, I'll do tshuva on today. Every day I do tshuva on yesterday. Tomorrow I'll do tshuva on today.
The one that you're obligated to is Father in Heaven. That's it. That is where the story finished. From that moment and on, now you need to do to keep His will. What's His will? Hashem, what? How, before you ask Him, how do you want to know? You want someone else to tell you? Is that person will go to trial instead of you after 120? No, I promise to you that He will not going to recognize you in Judgment Day. Not because He doesn't love you, because He will be so terrified from His own trial that He won't be able to function. All of His bones will bang each other, will hit each other. He won't be able to... What's my name? Who am I? What am I doing here? What's going on with me? What's what, what I'm going to say? And if they're going to ask me... I'll ask you a question that I ask many times in classes. If now the biggest rabbi of them all will come and will tell all of the chief rabbis and all of the Talmidei Chachamim and all of the Avrichim will tell us all with them together, we must do tshuva. Okay, the simple verse. We all must do tshuva. Very easy to understand, right? Now I'm asking you, how many of all of us will do tshuva? My answer to you is hopefully me. Because I said it so many times, maybe few of my students that heard that lecture will follow, but all of the rest that have not heard my lectures will not going to do tshuva. I'll tell you why. Everyone will take that rabbi words seriously. One will say, yes, I must wake up earlier in the morning. I cannot be lazy anymore. Great. Second one will say, he's right, I must go to shul, I cannot pray at home anymore, I must be serious, great, amazing. Third one will say, hey, I cannot rebuke my wife, she was crying so much, I'm going to apologize, great, amazing. That's not what the Rebbe said. To honor your wife, it's one mitzvah. To wake up early in the morning, it's a second mitzvah. To go and pray in the minyan in shul, it's a third mitzvah. All important and great, fantastic. You're going to be rewarded on them. Perfect. But the rabbi said you need to do tshuva. To do tshuva, it means to apologize, to feel bad on your crimes, and to tell Hashem, Hashem, listen, today I was looking on something that I was not supposed to look you remember Hashem? I went out from Amazing Savings and there was something over there and you need to tell him exactly what was that thing that you were looking and checking and say to Hashem Itbarach and it was not allowed and I'm sorry Hashem, help me not to do it again. And before you did that, you haven't done tshuva. I'm sorry. If you had desire for someone else's money, or car, or wife, or I don't know what, profession, or kippah, and you had the desire for that, so you were violating, breaking Lot Ahmod, the most important commandment from the Ten Commandments. If you had the desire for something that belonged to someone, how you do tshuva on that? You're not waking up early in the morning or going to respect your wife. Those are other things. You need to come back from your sin to Hashem. You need to say to Hashem, Is it too late now to say, Sorry, Hashem, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I looked at a wrong thing. And I don't feel so bad with myself, so it's probably another th sin that I'm carry. So, please Hashem, help me to do tshuva. I'm apologizing. I messed up today. Today I didn't learn Torah. Today I forgot to respect my wife. Today I was rebuking my children too hard, way too hard. Please Hashem. I was not focusing. I was not thinking. Please Hashem. I was cheap. I saw a poor person and I thought that I was righteous, but I forgot mitzvah tzedakah. So what's going on with me, Hashem? And before you confess, open your mouth and give out words from your heart that will show that you regret you have not completed your tshuva. And the verse is saying that Am Israel cannot be redeemed with nothing else, no advice will help them except of tshuva. And Am Israel nigalin ela bi tshuva. Tshuva, tshuva, not nets. 
not filin rashi and rabenu tam, not shalosh yudes in Shabbos, not melave malka on bread, washing your hands with two nut lot and drying the faucet before you. Guys, relax. There is no bet mikdash yet. It burned 2,000 years ago. Relax. Breathe and try to find the way back to Hashem. Hashem, hi. How are you? Where are you? I can't see you in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck right now. Can you please show me your mercy, Hashem? That's the way to see Hashem. To who Hashem is close? To everyone that will call Him with truth. So how you call Hashem in Barach with truth? You need to talk about your own life issues. Because if you're going to fake a certain higher level condition, no, Hashem, Adricheni ba'amitecha, lamdeni chukecha, zakeni na, kacheni na, taareni na, ana, what are those words for you? Ribono shel olam, shezke le tikun abrit b'shlemut, shezke le arat zeir anpin b'tachlit haya, what are you talking about? Maybe there is a holy man that understands those prayers and when he is saying them, he means something. But if you will use those words that are written for you, you won't have a heart in those words. You won't express your heart when you're going to pray. So how in the world do you want Hashem to answer your prayers? If you don't have even an intention, if you don't understand what you're saying, if you're just mumbling words to Hashem and you don't even think about Hashem when you're standing like that. Oh, what people think about me? Oh, that person, look at him, how he's walking back. Oh, that person, oh, his wife, she doesn't work his suyrosh. And you're in front of Hashem, Ribbono Shel Olam. Close the sidur, put it aside and start doing tshuva. Ribbono Shel Olam, I promise to you, you will be answered. Now you will be answered. Say, Put the sidur aside on the table. It's on me. Your mincha, you lost mincha. I'm taking that on myself. I promise. Dor Moshe Ben Emanuela. You want my ID number? What do you need? I don't have a, a social security number. What do you need? I'll give you. I am taking that on myself. Don't daven mincha. Don't pray mincha. That mincha. Not all of your minchot. I'm not that strong. One mincha. Okay, now go to shul. Close the sidur, don't pray mincha on me. I'm taking it on myself. But you need to do one thing. What? Talk to Hashem. Don't say Hashem, Svatai Tiftach, Ufiagiti Latecha. No, don't. Don't. You're not praying mincha that time. I'm taking it on myself. Don't worry. It's not on you. It's on me. I'm saying it in public, many witnesses, everything. Sefer Torah Baichal. On me. Don't be scared. On me. Okay? Don't pray mincha tomorrow. It's on me. But, in one term, when you're going, so just talk to Hashem Itbrach from the heart. How much time it takes you to pray Mincha? To me, it takes at least seven minutes to say Shemona Esri. Minimum. For you, for sure, two minutes, one minute, you finish, right? Hashem Shalom Romav. Allah. We need to look at the neighbors, iPhones, check messages. Okay, great. So one minute. I'm asking you, one minute that it takes to you to speed up and finish Mincha, that one minute take to have an honest conversation with Hashem. It's on me. And tell Hashem, it barach Hashem, look, I'm sorry. I'm lost. I can't find myself. I don't know where I'm holding. I'm faking Hashem. I'm lying to myself for years. I'm lying to my husband, I'm lying to my wife, I'm lying to my children, I'm lying to myself, I'm lying to you, Hashem. I don't know who I am. I don't understand what it means to keep Shabbat. I'm not sure that I'm keeping Shabbat. I'm not sure what it means to keep Kashrut. I'm not sure that I'm eating Kasher. I don't know what it means, all of those things, Hashem. Please help me. Can you bring me closer to you, Hashem? I want to feel close to you. Where are you, Hashem? between all the rules and all the paragraphs and all the verses and, and all the guidings and the advice and the Musar and the rabbis and the rabbis in Queens, Ribbono Shel Olam, help me. I want to come closer to you. What's going on with me? Heal me. Help me. Say those simple words. 
those words will bring you to Hashem. And Hashem is I don't know how you speed it up in finishing in in one minute, but still, let's say that you do. It, it doesn't bring you closer to Hashem. Why? Because Hashem cannot answer your prayer because you never really prayed on anything. Right? Because you don't understand the meaning of those verses and you don't understand what you're saying and your heart is completely somewhere else or in the cooking or in the shopping or in the meetings or in the friends or in the television or in the hobbies playing golf I don't know where you find time to play golf you're not you're playing golf how do you find time to play golf you gotta make time for everything you gotta make time you learn from Donald Trump you also play golf I know he's the only one that plays golf But you need to find time for everything, so you need to find time for Hashem as well. Five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, find time for Hashem. Stop everything and dedicate ten minutes to a simple conversation. Only you and Him. And please open your heart in those ten minutes. Say the truth. Say your deepest, honest, most painful truth to Hashem. Tell him, Hashem, I'm a liar. That's my truth, that I'm a liar. That I don't care, that I don't feel like it, that I hate it, that I'm suffering, that I want to drop everything and to run away. Say the truth. The truth will heal you. And lies will keep on contaminating you and break you to pieces because your sorrow and your pain are coming to you only because that you're not loyal and truthful to yourself, to your Creator, to Father in Heaven. You're not really close to Him as long as you're lying to yourself, faking a relationship with Him. When you're not in touch with Him at all, faking a relationship without being in touch with Him? Who you're in touch with? With the one that you speak with? With the one that you talk with? I'm in touch with you because you have my number and I have your number and we're talking, so we're in touch. But if you stopped calling, so the connection stopped. And if you're not talking to your father for years already, and you're just acting, yeah, I'm his daughter, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not in touch with him. So you cannot enjoy from that relationship. So nothing is flowing in those tunnels, in those channels. No water of purity, no inspiration, no light, no oxygen, no air, no happiness, no joy. Just dark life. Of, of, of religion, cult, it's not truth. It's fake. You want to be close to Hashem? Great. Hashem said how you come close to Him. You open your mouth with honest words and you confess and you ask requests and you talk to Him. And then He's coming and He's already close to you. And more than that, you don't need to do. You will want to do the rest. All the rest will be a piece of cake for you. It will be easy for you. You're going to run to the mitzvot. Like you found a huge treasure like King David. Why King David was running to keep mitzvot? Because he was always talking. All day long I'm talking to Hashem. And as much as you're going to talk to him more, that's how much you're going to see him more, recognize him more, remembering him more, going to see his kindness and his love more and more and more. And then you will come to a point that you cannot go back. You're going to love him so much that you will be ready to die for him, to sacrifice everything for him. And you're going to become like one of those righteous ones. And it's only by the merit of your honest conversations. And on me, the stupid me, of Alter David Chaim Stern, the huge tzaddik from Bnei Brak, said that I am, and I'm stupid, I'm telling you, I'm dumb, my wife will testify on me. <laughs> I messed up completely. 
And he testified on me, the Talmud of the Chazonish, we're talking about an angel. He said that on me, and I'm surprised to hear it, that Ani Shamaim Amiti, that I have real Yerat Shamaim. His helper that was standing over there start changing colors, couldn't understand what. And another Hasid, Meshuga Bal Tshuva, with tattoos came and he's saying on him that he's a Yerat Shamaim Amiti. You know what it means to say on a person, Yeresh HaMayim Amiti? It's not uh, something small to say. After it, a friend of mine asked the helper, were you surprised to hear that he said on my friend, on me, that he's Yeresh HaMayim Amiti? He said, I never heard him talking like that. Rav Stern never gives compliments to people. So Rav Stern looked at him that he's changing colors. So he asked him, do you want to know how he achieved that level? So he answered to him, yes. He said, because he had thousands of hours of it bodedut. Thousands of hours of it bodedut. How does he know? I never told him. He knows. Because he's got divine spirit to know those things. But I know. I also know. My wife also going to testify on that. That I spent thousands and thousands of hours talking to Hashem. Why? Because I'm stupid. And I know that I'm stupid. So I need someone wise to guide me. A wise person realized that he's stupid and he's going to the wise to ask for advice. Ezeu Chacham, who is a wise person? Alomed Mikol Adam, the one that is ready to learn from everyone. That's a wise person, not a genius. It doesn't mean in a genius that sits eight hours every day learning in Kolel, Gemara, Talmud Yerushalmi, Bavli, Shulchan Aruch, Tur, Mefarshi, Imran, Rit, Ritva. No, it doesn't mean in nowhere. The Gemara is asking, who is a Talmud Chacham? Who is that wise scholar? And it's saying, if you saw a Talmid Chacham that he sinned yesterday night, what? A Talmid Chacham that sinned yesterday night? Yes, that's what the Gemara is saying. So, don't come in the next day and rebuke him on that. Why? Because for sure he made tshuva. So now a Talmud Chacham can fail and sin at night, but for sure that in the next morning he will already going to be clean from that sin. Why? Because he did tshuva. So actually a Talmud Chacham is a person that is doing tshuva every night. That's the definition of a Talmud Chacham. By the Gemara. It's not my book. It's the Gemara. The Gemara is answering that answer on who is the Talmud Chacham. It's a person that is doing tshuva every day. That's a Talmud Chacham. A person that just learns and learns and learns and learns and learns. I'm not sure. I don't know. Even King David did tshuva. You want to say that he's also doing tshuva? Where? When? How much time it takes for him to do tshuva? In the vidu after Shmona Esrei in Mincha, then you do tshuva. Is that vidu enough? But the Rambam is saying that that tshuva is not enough because you must express and you must tell every detail of your sin. If you stolen 10 cents from the grocery, you need to mention 10 cents from the grocery. And it doesn't written in the vidu in the confession. It doesn't even written in the vidu of Rav uh, Saadia Gaon before of, of, of Yom Kippur. Also over there it doesn't written. Ten cents from amazing savings. It doesn't written. You must say it if you want to do tshuva on those ten cents that you took. You must say it. And if you haven't, someone going to ask you on that. Why you didn't do tshuva? Because tshuva is the solution that Hashem gave to us on all of our sins, on all of our crimes. And we cannot be redeemed with no other advice. Even 20 hours straight of learning Mara, standing without eating, won't atone like Tshuva. Because it's written that when they're doing Tshuva, immediately they will be redeemed. Miyadem nigalin. Immediately. Do Tshuva. It's not hard. 
Just the evil inclination, your Yetzirah, doesn't want you to do it. That's why it's hard. But it's not hard. Actually, it's easy. It makes your life so good. You come back to yourself. You feel relief. You feel that it's okay to go and also to apologize to your wife. Also to apologize to your friend. Because you already broke the ice in yourself. And then you're not afraid. A person that is afraid, Rashi is saying, why people are afraid? Because of crimes that they are hiding. They're afraid. Because of the sins, and people are afraid. People are afraid because they're sinning. And not doing tshuva. Not because they're sinning. If they're sinning and doing tshuva, you can call him a Talmid Chacham. Just sinning and sinning, and sinning and sinning, and sinning and sinning, and now you need to hide, so you lie. And then someone is suspecting, so you need to make another lie. And one sin drags another, and you're lying, and you become a liar, and you don't have a choice. Why you don't have a choice? Because you're too afraid to do tshuva, and to say, I messed up. I listened to Justin Bieber, what can I do? I'm sorry. <laughs> What do you want? Can I hide that? I already sang it in 20 lectures until today. I cannot erase it. It's all over the place. It's on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. It's uh, That's it. People download it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Just do Shema. Shema, I'm sorry. What can you do? Hashem is ask, asking only, only that. What am I asking from you? It means to see me, to have me in your life. It's not to be afraid of me. That's not the right interpretation. That's not the right explanation to Ira'ah, fear. No, there is a different word. Fear. Great. Yashpachad v'yashir'ah. Fear, it's one thing. There is ira, it's another thing. The aga, to be worried, it's a third thing. You have many things you can do in Avodat Hashem. To have ira shamaim, it's to see Hashem in front of your eyes always, to know Him always, to think about Him always, not to be scared and terrified, can't move. No, to love Him. Lira u to love him, to care, to see him, to care about his children, about his rules, about his will. Hashem, what do you want from me? Hashem, what do you want from me? Everyone can do that. And if you will do it, you will be answered. <coughs> and before you're going to do it, so okay, you're going to suffer. You're suffering, okay. Why you suffer? Because you don't have Hashem. But if you will stop suffer, and you will call Hashem, Hashem, I'm suffering, I need your help, that's it. It's the end of your problems. And if you don't believe me, so wait. Come to another class, watch another video. You will see. I'm not lying. You will see proofs. Go with that method. You will see results in your life. I'm not asking anything from you. Just offering you that opportunity to reconnect yourselves to your true selves. That's it. That you will become yourself. That's amazing. That's the creation of Hashem. That's the revealing of His greatness, His godliness. No one can do it better than you. What? What did you can do the best? I cannot do that. I can't play golf. I don't have that. Someone else can do that. Someone can work with children, someone can have a, 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 a school, uh, teach their kids homeschool, another person can, can rollerblades, everyone is doing something else. Maybe you disrespect yourself on being who that you are, but you don't understand why you are who that you are. Hashem made you to be that way. Try to observe, to look, Hashem is not silly. Hashem's got a big, deep intention in everything He does. Me, for an example, as a teenager, I loved rap music, black music. I was crazy on that all of my childhood. And then, when I started doing tshuva, 
I don't hear music of goyim, I don't hear music for music, especially not rap, it's violence, a lot of, of, of cursing, words, great, wonderful. So five, six years I was very strong in that, and then one day it explodes. And I felt like singing, and I felt like doing something. So what I do, I went, and I used my talents, and I paid in a, in a studio to a person, and I record the CD in Hebrew. And it's one of the best albums in Israel, in, 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 in Hebrew rap. It's amazing. And it's talking only about Hashem, and love Hashem, and love Am Israel. And it's an amazing album. But you know why it came out? Because I was listening to Snoop Doggy Dog and, <laughs> and and the rest of that culture. It's a culture. And if I wouldn't spend years in my own darkness listening to that music with alcohol and drugs, I wouldn't have the desire to take out that album. And today that album will go out and be spread between people and will redeem lives of, of, of young people that need to hear that music. Because if they won't hear that music, they won't come to hear your Shabbos songs in the Beit Midrash in Shalosh Shudas. They couldn't care less about that. I'm surprised that you're going. So that they will go? No way! They're not able. It doesn't speak to them. So Hashem took me through that swamp and then revealed something to the light. Okay? So He took you also to some dark places in your life? Great! So just get the message. Go to Hashem and ask Him for what Hashem I had to spend so many years in college. So why Hashem I had to, to waste so many years of my life in the streets, working. I was a plumber. Why I was supposed to be a plumber for 20 years? Hashem will answer your prayer. And Hashem will give you the wisdom to know exactly which problems only you can fix that no one else in the world can fix. And it's only because you were a plumber for 20 years of your life. So don't blame yourself. Ask Hashem, what's the purpose of my life? Who am I and what's the mission of my life? Who I really am? What is your real will for me? Not what the rabbis are saying. Not what my parents are saying. Not what the community are saying. What do you want from me, Hashem? And when you're going to ask it from an honest, open heart, you will be answered. And then you will know the answer. And then let's see you go and use your power and your talents and your gifts and your abilities that Hashem treasured inside of you. Okay. Are you ready to rock? Great. Hashem will bless you. will answer, answer to all of your prayers, all of your requests. will give you simcha, happiness, joy, complete satisfaction from life. The ability to keep... Torah and mitzvot be'emet and not uh, to be fake from birth just really to be close to Hashem you never heard that before? I thought it's the same Hashem will bless you all thank you very much this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.